Back again, shout out for my folk over every multiverse. You know what I'm saying? All, all of them, all the different species. Here we go, Holla. This is uh, Buster Rhymes. It's off the Wash soundtrack. I used to have this movie on DVD. Oh, it's from a movie? Just one of those. Like, <clears throat> they were in a movie? They call it like, uh, yeah, Black yeah. Sportation. Yeah, like in huh? this movie, <laughs> like, uh, they call them like the, the black, uh, like black people, they call it Black Sportation exploitation like you know movies or whatnot like where it's just uh like the old like shaft and iceberg slim oh, and, oh yeah you know yeah, what i mean cliche of people, yeah but, but um yeah this movie it's like uh it's like dr dre and snoop dogg and they live in an apartment together huh. and snoop's hustling making money and you know and uh dre doesn't have a job and he ends up being like the manager at this car wash and it's weird they kind of like hate each other in the movie a little bit it's actually not bad acting and shit you know what i mean yeah and there's a lot of different like i mean eminem's in it uh really he's one he's one of the employees that gets fired and he's just like in his bedroom like seething his revenge the whole movie <laughs> he shows up like i'll tell the whole shit like he shows up with an ak at the end because the east side is there's like these duo rap duo that uh i think snoop signed or whatever they're like chilling in their car and he's like they're like oh that motherfucker right player that motherfucker got heat because he just runs by with an ak like going to fucking uh kidnap or some shit like the owner of the wash or whatever who is george wallace like the, the famous fucking comedian from the 70s 80s i've heard of that name yeah <clears throat> it's got it's a crazy because it, yeah it's really? it's all based on this is an original <clears throat> wash movie too from way back in the day george wallace he, he's probably in that i think that i'm pretty sure that's oh wait name. Yeah, but yeah, it's a legend. I mean, they did a great job remaking that movie. This was like an updated version that came out in two thousand one. Because it's like I shit, said, this shit came out in the seventies originally. The forty fifth governor of Alabama. <laughs> I don't know. Ch uh, type in. Maybe I'm wrong. When the, the oh, last Wallace, yeah, the comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Comedian. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. He's funny as shit, actually. Like, yeah. He's really funny. It's just so like this is the same. One, two. I don't even have the shit set up right. 1952. He's a year older than my father. Yeah, he's funny as fuck. Here we go. Yeah. Busted. Yeah. Legendary soundtrack. Some of it's on shit. This should sound like One, two o'clock in the morning with the up against anything the intelligence in that like the way yeah, i mean fucking right and the shit he's talking about the, beginning, like, the whole just... subject matter on it it's like <clears throat> it's like world shit it's not just you know most people just rapping yeah. about the hood he's rapping about Yugoslavia, dude you could slob Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia, like polish jewish people. in the beginning like yeah i dropped the bomb scripture at your bar mitzvah yeah <laughs> Just his, oh my god, Buster Rhymes is such a genius, man, when it comes to that shit. I'm 
how your mind stay deeper than astronomy and mathematics like Galileo. Smash you niggas like mashed potato. Back when niggas used to rock valleys and clocks, I used to watch little niggas sit and hustle, nickel crack in the park. That won't spit a bright flame in the dark. Blood spills, stay up the street. That's how niggas be leaving they mall. Fucking with diplomats who love bailing. Monopolizing, we could get other money fucking with Israelis. So solid, how we be symbolic to a handful of niggas that be all scheming on the same wallet. Them type niggas that be conspiring and kidnapping shit happens. Gun clap for you in the gift wrap. You should follow how the style switch up. Like a group of religious niggas scheming to kill their archbishop. You big pussy nigga acting all hard. Call me atheist because I don't believe in you, God. It's like a grand feast celebrating the bounce of the century. I told the rest to be quick for any type of discrepancy. Most of the great renaissance artists and architects like half of the people unless you watch it, it's so hard to get. We got the obscure shit for the street. Nevertheless, we split your head in your chest and watch it a beat. Yo, we got the obscure shit for the street. Nevertheless, we split your head in your chest and watch it a beat. production is so crisp you want to hear another one real quick that is just insanely clean like i'll have to type it in probably but uh oh my god the same album yeah it's one with dre and snoop on it let's just get a, at least a little taste of it the, the title yeah. the title track because the, <laughs> the, the production on the beat is so crisp i mean it's got like a delay on it a little bit but it's uh yeah there it is it's just insanely fucking. Have you guys tried the brain freeze? Now, brain freeze uh, sounds disgusting. It's yeah, not sour gummy worms. Chong pulls up on a scooter <laughs> wow. and he's got like three or four different kinds right he's got like all right he's got like a big bale or whatever and then he's got like a smaller thing and he's got a little smaller and then he's got a little pack and he won't give up the little pack because it's like the shit where it's i think it's basically it's probably mixed with peyote or something like it's some, oh, wow. it's some wild fucking weed from who Damn. knows where peyote. he's like He's like, I need this to get home because he's like, I don't know, it's like just some super duper strong shit from who knows where in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some weed you never heard of. And he's like, no, I need this to get home because <laughs> I take one hit of this shit and I can just 
Man, for fucking 34 hours. <clears throat> but everything else, he's like, he's trying to get like thousands of dollars for his weed. Snoop's like, I'll give you, he's like, what? Hey, look at you, you're rich. Because he's like, got a fucking dime or a platinum chain on and shit. It's like, I'll, I'll give you everything for 500. 500? Okay, give me 500. <laughs> this part here was like, now back at, now back to the lecture at hand. Perfection is expected and I'm feeling that demand. I've heard that before. Yeah, you know what he did? He, they flipped, uh, what is, I think it's from, a couple of lines it's from, a, it's from another song. On the classic 92 collaboration, Nothing But a G. Thing. Yeah. Because Snoop says that, and he says he says yeah, it's a little different. That's right, it's true. Not like, yes. but it's the way he flowed yeah, that he shit right there. Interpolates. It's an yeah. updated version of that, like the way he flowed that, like. He had to flow it in this crazy. song from that song. And Dre yeah. did it, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I think Dre's always had one of the great, the great voice on the record. Yeah, even in the Defiant Ones documentary, he even says like, "I never really liked my voice on record." Like, dude, your voice. Like for that ten deep year like, period where you put out all that shit, like it's incredible. Yeah. Like, Stop sign, there's bullet holes, just keep rolling. Yeah, you're like, if you're on like a, what is it, Slauson Avenue? Slauson Avenue. And like, uh, I think it's uh, some part in South Central. One of those hoods in South Central. But, you know, there's a lot of those where it's just gang run. <coughs> yeah. that's, how, that's how Nipsey, that's how Nipsey got taken out, man. He went back to, because, you know, he was reinvesting in all these businesses around the neighborhood. And when he was there, somebody pulled up and fucking shot him from everybody like what the fuck but that that shit that shit happens all the time though like yeah. you know, rappers even if they are you know it's all for the good and like want to invest in the community <laughs> they get caught up <clears> on <throat> oh, genius this is what it says about the song this bomb ass song from the official soundtrack of the 2001 movie the washed on snoop dogg and dr gray is really underrated big time classic hip-hop dude the whole soundtrack's amazing <coughs> i used to listen to that shit in my car when I was like 20 and I would just because I had like a couple uh, Pioneer 8 inch speakers with the Pioneer flip bass CD player that shit was the shit I wish I would have kept that shit I think mom got me that for Christmas one year but I had it in like a fucking 88 Buick Century that I was driving <laughs> I drove that for like 4 years uh, the song samples would bang all those CDs I want fucking rap CDs. I want to do something freaky to you by Leon Haywood <laughs> There's a lot of good songs in there. The doc back with a brand new sack. Shit's wrong. When it gone, I blast. Out of town, out of bounds, no pass. Running up, talking shit, get smashed. Shoot first, ask questions last. Falling back on that ass. Hit the switch and let the ass just drain. 2001, 2002, tag. My nigga, what you holding? Step out with the Stacey's in the snoop, y'all rolling. Rolling. With the brains in my hand. Crimp down, wait, get down. Oh, yeah. You got to pay the cost to be the boss after all that dirt. I got to get my shit off the wall. Death Row Records was the most gangster, Dana, most yeah. gangster record or get, label in hip hop, in music, any genre of music. It was like the mafia of fucking hip hop. What was it? Death Row Records. Oh. He was signed to him and Dre, and yeah, and Dre was already planning on leaving even when Tupac showed up for like that last year or whatever the fuck, because they lasted like a good five years, and then it just. 
all the crazy shit because Suge was affiliated with Bloods, Snoop with Crips, and he's a Crip, and I'm coming from that world and shit. But, so they're melding, you know what I mean? All that crazy shit. Right. And you get all these crazy motherfuckers that are just waiting, like Snoop says, like to get active on whatever it is. Just the proof and prove that they will shoot somebody if you fucking say yes or if you know like some crazy shit like that but yeah dre seen that shit coming he's like yeah i'm getting the fuck out of here and <laughs> he probably just had enough of all the bullshit anyway as far as like i mean the, in the documentaries even uh the doc talked about it because he was always there too remember the, DO, the rapper the doc dude he's fucking yeah he's the one that lost his voice because he put out one record and Dr Dre was producing him in the late 80s. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. And he was always there <laughs> mentoring, like, after that. Because yeah. he could never rap, like, you know. He was actually pretty good at rapping. Wow. But, yeah, well, like, he was there when, like, N.W.A. was popping off. And there was also a female group called J.J. Fad that was, like, the first gold uh, artist oh, wow. for Easy es uh, Ruthless Records. So they kind of, like, financially, like, they had some money now and they could, uh, NWA could go out and fucking do tours. And... Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, Dre was with the Ruthless, Ruthless Records, Easy e shit, and then he went to end up, uh, to Death Row. And then he left Death Row, and then he started, he, like, he fucking started, like, he restarted, like, two or three times. Because then he started Aftermath. And yeah. that's when he worked, started working with Eminem. <clears throat> and... Cause he, he put out two like albums that flopped like we talked about like the firm we did a song from and then uh, there was one before that called the aftermath that had like a nuclear bomb ex like explosion on the cover and both of those albums flopped they didn't do good they didn't sell good and the sound is different like the song we did on the on the firm that has like yeah had like az and nas and foxy brown and shit remember there was one song we did from it like a couple so. months ago and uh the production was definitely different like the beats when you hear the beats you would never think those are dre beats that's what i was saying when you were listening to it so it just wasn't yeah just they never took i guess but, I mean, but the third the project like, under like, aftermath yeah. yeah it was just something different for him he wanted yeah. to try something different yeah um but the third project under aftermath was the 2001 chronic and that motherfucker yeah everybody knows that shit as yeah. far as the way it went with, that was know, the the, the took off for him leaf that was a launch and yeah it was like the digital looking yeah pot leaf it was just like yeah there's the chronic the original chronic that came out with like dre on the fucking zigzag came okay, out in right. 92 and then there's that one in 2001 that has yeah eminem <clears throat> but eminem yeah he's working with eminem he's putting out albums with him he did that his eminem second album sold 30 million which is wow. fucking nuts yeah. like within a couple years back then which is insane that should never happen again probably never will again not like that because people don't even buy like you know physical shit no more not like I mean, people still buying records and shit there's record collectors and shit but this not cds and records. shit yeah, <laughs> and like that as people you listen know. to them yeah kid. back then it was nuts because that's what it was like people were selling fucking cds like crazy and shit like, yeah there you go. Most of the song, anyway. Hopefully yeah. we don't get blocked. Cool. It's been a good reaction. Check out this whole couple album. Couple songs. Do that sometimes. We'll do a double I mean, it's got three song. views on it. Do the production. Isn't that beat? Yeah, that's I mean, it's definitely just classic Dre. Yeah. Nuts, man. Like, his sonics are unmatched. <clears throat> we should sit and watch the movie crazy. sometime. React to it. It's pretty crazy, man. It's what it's actually really well done. Yeah, DJ Pooh. Who was in uh, Friday? There was a lot of like in the on Google. It said there was a lot of uh, critics who gave it like an amateur type vibe, and it was poorly done. No, I think it felt it rushed. Doesn't look cheap at all. With very little laughs. It doesn't look cheap at all. It's, it's pretty. Uh, I mean, it's it's it's. I guess it's got some slow parts and shit. You know, it's yeah. It's, yeah. It's not a Friday or anything like that, you know? No. DJ Pooh is in it, though. He was in Friday. He's the one that got the guy with the guy, uh, Debo, stole his bike. 
remember? <laughs> and he came back, tried to get it, and he fucking uppercut it up. <clears throat> oh, that guy? <laughs> That's my grandma gave me that chain. That dude's so funny. Yeah, he's in he's in the wash. He's the yeah, cause they actually uh, I know I gave away most of the movie already, but they kidnap the guy that owns the wash. And they have him like he's like <clears throat> bind it up. Mm. You just make sure they get us our cheese and it's DJ Pooh and some other guy. <laughs> it's alright, man. It's a fucking hood movie, you know? Yeah. Eminem's yeah, in it and shit. It's pretty cool. Watch it. He's a crazy fucking dude that gets fired. Peace. We out. 20 minute reaction on this one. If you made it to 19 minutes, let us know.